Um, the one, this is going to be the main one that you want, are rules. And I would ask that even though you have the back, that you look in the front. Because there's certain rules you quote unquote don't know yet. Right, so the back, of course, has them all filled in. Let's not look at that yet. So, <clears throat> trigonometry. Right? This is this word that we keep dropping and keep alluding to, like, this is what we're doing. But, so trigonometry is the study of how angles relate to the lengths that they correspond to in right triangles. Right? I'm sure there's a better formal definition. If we were in the ebook, we could click on trigonometry. And you know, that's actually just right here. So if we wanted, don't click on that. What do we mean, three, two, two? Yeah. Trigonometry technically, literally, measure of triangles. Right? Now, this starts to bring in these weird words that a lot of people look at and they read as sin, 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 sin sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, I know S-I-N-E is a weird combination of letters for us. But this is sine, just pronounced just like S-I-G-N. Right? Sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, each of those actually have an inverse to it as well, but we will get into those as we get deeper into trig. So most mathematicians just abbreviate trigonometry to trig because um, what does the, the rest of it essentially mean? Yeah, like the study of, the met, like things, yeah, so trig just tells us what we need to know about that. So, we're given this triangle, and this is legitimately um, something that my friend who's an engineer draftsman, or not engineer, an architect draftsman, um, deals with, like, pretty often, handicap ramps, right? The ADA has very specific requirements on handicap ramps, and every building has to be ADA accessible, not every public building. So... Let's say that we've been told the ramp needs to have an elevation angle of 11 degrees or less. And the run that they have to work with is 20 feet long. What will the max height that they can build this, this patio or front porch or whatever structure we're talking about going to, what's the max height it can go to? Well, let's use what we had from yesterday and figure out is there any way we can utilize that. You guys talk with each other. So it's four. Because 20 times 20 is 20. So we reference back that the slope relationship that we saw here for 11 degrees. I don't know why this does this. We've gone over how to fix that, right? Because I think I'm going to have a sub again on Monday, but it's probably just going to be a test. Um, or actually, I think you guys just have closure because you guys are easier to talk to than my seventh graders. No offense to them, but they like to freak out, so I'll wait until them on Friday. Um, actually, we'll be ready for your chapter three mastery on Monday or the closure. Um, because my brain is on this, let's decide right now. So look at the rest of the week, kind of mentally. Today is Tuesday, and we're doing three two two, right? And this I. I know you still may be getting used to this, but I respect you guys to the point of, like, I don't care to make the schedule. We just have to get through certain things. You guys can make these choices. My plan is 323 tomorrow, 324 Thursday, 325 Friday, and maybe start looking at the closure. But then, as long as I can trust you, like I know I can, Monday with the sub, um, I have friends visiting from out of town. I found out I can't go to their wedding. I just can't make it, so I, I want to hang out with them a little bit. Um, and he's marrying, like, a girl that we didn't know, so we're all kind of, like, get to know her and everything. So Monday, you could either start working on the mastery or just do closure as a group, like what we normally do, like, when I have a sub. Because it keeps lining up that I have subs near the end of the chapter. So are you guys cool to do closure? And you'll be gone. So it'll just be the four of you. Yeah, closure was in the book, right? Yep. Yeah. And the answers are in the book, answers are in the book too. All right, so... Since we've all decided, like, we're all here and we're all cool, I'm going to start writing those plans as you guys are doing closure on Monday. So the rest of the week will just be one lesson each day. We won't combine anything on Friday like I was debating with you, Craig. No. Closure on Monday. All right. I don't think I need to write this out relating the slope and making this into a proportion, but that's what we're doing, right? With the triangles that we know or with the angles that we know and the slope relationships that we know, 
we can solve for these unknown values. So the next six of these, I want you to do. Now, F, real quick, this is a seven down here because it just doesn't fit. Actually, I could probably do that and make it fit. There we go. Magic. Do you want us to do it on paper or can we draw something? I would love for you to draw on graph paper. Actually, I don't know if we you don't have to draw the triangles out. No, Use your reference sheet from yesterday. I want you to write out the proportions more so is what I'm hoping for you to write out. So like A, when you look at your reference sheet from yesterday, the 22 degree angle had a slope ratio of 2 to 5. Yeah. Right? What you should be writing out on your paper, just so you know. What... So hold up. Then write out rise, run. This is where people will make their mistakes is they'll flip this. Please make sure you're doing rise, run. So then this, if it's a times 5, it's a times 5, and y is 10. That's what we would be writing on our paper. For the I would like you to show the proportion because that makes your brain double check that I do rise over run, rise over run. If you don't write it out, you're asking to accidentally flip it in your head. And while that's not the end of the world, it's close. What uh, what angles oh, don't we have filled in? Okay. Oh, we have. Are you trying to look at We talked about it really quickly because I think that was the last thing we were talking about is and tomorrow we'll keep filling these things in. So keep going. We're going to revisit your resource page and get the rest of it taken care of. Sorry, it'll go away once it loads. Or maybe I'll try to load again. It's still it was. Yeah, because we see 79 up here. And I'm trying to remember, I, I think we touched on 83 really quickly at the end of yesterday. We don't have 79, Sophia says. Now, we kind of do. 79 has a specific relationship with another angle up here. How did we get this for 83 to be 50 over 6? Oh, 84, 84 was what we got. So wait, what about 79 would then share what kind of relationship? Like, Complementary with 11, which means their slope triangles would be like reversed, right? So 79 should be 5 over 1. Go ahead and fill that in. See if you can find any other relationships like that on this paper. It's 90. Complementary. To complement is the right thing to do. Oh, there's 72 and 18. 72 and 18, meaning okay. 72 would be? Um, three, three over one. Three over one. That's a bad one. Oh, 
Oh yeah, a couple of these we just found from the graph, right? Because we drew them. Um, there's 22 and 68, bro. Ooh, 22 and 68. So it'd be five over two. If you can find its complement, you can figure out the reciprocal. Well, 83 we found yesterday from when we graphed it with the protractor. 89, man. That's like almost a right angle. Right? So we're missing. Do we have eight degrees filled in? Do we have eight degrees filled in? This is zero over any number, right? For zero. We don't know eight. Eight would go with 82. So it might be close to 6 compared to 50, but it's not. Crap, so we're missing that one. We're missing 55. So, wait, what? No, we have 55. Do we? 55 is 10 over 5. It's 10 over 7. Ah, it's 10 over 7. You don't have 8 or 89. What the heck? I wrote 10 over 7. You don't have 8 or 89. Oh, Alright, well, let's keep going and see if there's any way that we figure those out. Do you want us to finish this? Well, we'll we will keep coming back to this resource page, but if you aren't done with these, finish these, stop. I need your symbol. We should have six proportions. Oh, just answers. Don't put down just answers. We talked about why. <laughs> no, I don't want to give you a progressing. Okay, those two things may end up going together. Alright, what do you mean? Are you trying to go fix the wall or something? Yeah, I was trying to say. I'm off right after school today, so I'll be looking at it for you to work on it. Are you going to get done now when it's promised? Or? I don't think you have time for this anyway. At least not after I get off work. Or Dude, you have to get realistic about trying to get places. I would have to get home to get boots and stuff and then get full force. It would be 5 to 10 oh. instead of like the shade. Even when I try to make a fast turn around for blue and then I'm not down until like 520. But text me what if you want. I gotta go do trade. I love trade. I'm fucked right now. I'm not joking. I love trade. I've used trade in so many applications from landscaping to woodworking oh, I, just love, I love trade seriously that as we went to college together i was a friend of mine he, he left his apple watch at my house because it was on the charger so i'm trying to get him to come and take his watch back um, yeah he, well, he didn't realize he didn't wasn't wearing it because he's a tennis pro so he often takes it off and then if he doesn't get used to doing another one he gets two thousand on so with 11, well, Audubon has a pretty good sports med program as well, uh, like sports medicine. So like how the body works, body kind of stuff. So, um, so here's our 11 degree angle again, right? So that has a slope ratio of one to five, right? So when that rise becomes 100, this run becomes something. Uh, it becomes I was about to say, guys. I just gave you a huge compliment on the Kelly McBride. Well, that's. Uh, yeah, right. You reacted immediately. 13. 13, right? Because what type of triangle is this? Uh, it's the uh, isosceles. Here, what would this angle be? 22. 
This slope ratio is 1. This would be 45. Why I paused is somebody tried to tell me 22. That's because I was looking at the other problem. Sure you were. I was. So this one is 22? Ah. See, I don't, I can't, I can't, well. 79, this is close to 85. 35? Why, what is that slope ratio for 79? Um, five, it's, um, it's 5 to 1. Yeah. Right. Awesome. That rise would be 5 awesome. times the run. So that still doesn't help us with any of those on the resource page that we don't have filled in yet. Why don't we could. We could just make triangles on a graph, right? But that may not be as clean of a way to solve it as we want. So now Sheila comes in. Oh, Sheila. Oh, Sheila. So Sheila's like, yeah, well, the, the one triangle at 79 is the same as what we did before. I can use tracing paper and extend it, and we can do this. So we could. Right, but we've talked about how expensive no, tracing paper is. Tracing paper is. What would you say to Sheila, who thinks we need to use tracing paper to manipulate this triangle and be able to like turn it? Save money. Money. We don't need money. Money. We've already talked about this, but Sheila hasn't. Right? Who could formalize what we said and tell Sheila how she doesn't need to copy that triangle to figure out B? She can use what we know, right? We've already kind of said this, I don't want of you to spit it back out by um, putting yeah, it in. Uh, um, 11 degrees is kind of like a uh, <laughs> So, what, 1 per 3. Okay, wait. 2 wants to. Yeah, okay, Liang, what would you say to Sheila? Just that the portion says um, 11 degrees and 1 degree. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But how do we know this? I agree with what you said, but how do we know this? Because what did we figure out? What we figured out, and what I would like you to jot in your notes, please, because it's only a few words. Complementary angles. And if you abbreviate that, that's up to you. Have what slope ratios? Actually, this might be O L. I forget. Reciprocal. Oh well, I can't spell, so I'm not sure my good. So we can double check spelling later. But complementary angles have reciprocal slope angles, right? Not inverse, because it's not taking a positive and making it negative. It's just reciprocal, right? So they multiply to make one. Not multiply to make negative one or add to make zero or anything like that, where we talk about other inverses or opposites or the other words that we were trying to spit out. Those weren't right. It's reciprocal slope angles. Okay, even though we don't know how to spell that. Nope. So for 68 degrees here, do we know what its slope angle is? Oh, we can oh, figure it out. We already did. Oh. I'll, don't give it as 2.5. Yeah, give it as the ratio. It's 5 halves, right? Or 5 to 2. So the rise is always that 5 factor, and the run is always that 2 factor. So if we set up 5 to 2, what do we set up? Equal to it. 30 over x. Multiply by 6. x is 12. Is that really it? No, I can't tell. Are you copying paste on your Oh, yeah. 
I knew today's lesson was shorter. That's also why I was looking at compressing this week a little bit. The only next thing is the graphic organizer, which I get. I stack homework up on you guys, and I want to give you time to practice this stuff. So, hold up. I am going to do one more thing. In a right triangle, draw any old right triangle on your paper. I'm going to over teach you guys a tiny bit right now. If this is the angle we're looking at, going right, going up, right, so that we can keep talking about those positive slope ratios we've been using. Because I could flip the triangle, and it still works the same. But since we've been working with those positive slope ratios, we'll look at it like this. This we know is the hypotenuse. Right? But then the other two legs now get very specific names compared to this angle. From theta, the angle that we're doing our trig with. This side will now be referenced as the opposite side. Opposite. And this relates back to hinge theorem a little bit. Not quite. This side, because it's right next door to the angle and is attached as part of the angle, is the adjacent. Why we care about this? When we use our calculators. Oh, that makes oh, it easier to. It's um, like because each of them is like a thing called the tan, right? He tried teaching us these about this. weird words, which are abbreviated here, are just learned relationships. Okay, it's a function somebody wrote for the calculator. And you could trace it back to who who formalized sine, cosine, and tangent. But it's just something that has been plugged into the, the software of the calculator to know that when processing this angle using this function, the ratio you will spit out will be that opposite over hypotenuse. So it takes the rise of the ramp over the length of the ramp. Now, let's say we don't want to work with the rise and the length. Cosine compares the run of the ramp, the adjacent, to the length of the ramp. Now I'm letting the cat out of the bag, but I think you guys would rather just know it instead of us waste our time with this word. Like, a lesson or two from now, we discover tangent, but I'd rather just kind of, we have time today to talk about it, and then we can move more, and because David's leaving. So that's everything. I wanted to talk to us before David leaves. Tangent. What is the opposite over the adjacent? The opposite over the It's the slope. Tangent is slope. The tangent function is just somebody trained a calculator. So when you tell it the angle, it actually tells you the rise run ratio. Wait. Now the problem is it does it as a decimal oh, unless you tell it otherwise. But then we can work with that. With the, you're saying like the tangent multiplies. On your angle. calculator. Now here's the scary thing though. Your calculator has to be in the right mode. So if we go in these calculators and hit mode, top oh, yeah. like top left by second, you want to make sure it's hovering on degrees, DEG. 
There's also radians and there's also gradients. You want it on degrees. If not, go over to it, hit enter, then do second clear or just clear whatever second quit and whatnot. Quit. Wait, excuse me. Hit tangent of 22. Oh. oh. Wait. So and it's fraction like 22, it? like the angle of that? So when you type in tangent of 22, you it. The answer of 0 0.40, all that nonsense, that is very close to two fifths. So what we found on our papers are the approximate, right? So hear me when I say those are not exact. Some of them might be. But when we use tangent, it tells us the slope ratio. Yang. So you're telling us it's all pointless and we should have just typed one number Oh, it's not pointless because now, what if somebody asked you what's the slope ratio of 89 degrees? Oh, <laughs> oh hey, look, now we can fill in our resource paper. Oh, yeah. Wow. Now it's really easy. Oh, oh. So if you type in tangent of 89. Or we could just look at the back of the paper. Equals 57. Wow. I really don't think. 57. Oh, the number 57? Yeah. Point two. Point 0.2 what? 2.8996. So this is all over 1, right? Because if it just spits out a number. So approximately, our tangent ratio for 89 is 57 over 1. But more accurately than that, is the value of 5,729, if we round right at that second decimal place, over 100. Because this is the same, right? Just multiply the top and bottom by 100. So those are actually the same ratios, except this one is a bit more accurate. 70 can go out to be 2.747. Or the, I don't know why my smartboard is doing that, but it's really driving me crazy. It's getting confused about where the mouse cursor is. So if we do tangent of 70, was another one we didn't have, I guess? No, we had 70. It was 8 that we didn't have. I don't think you did. They're rounded, and this is so really accurate for being rounded. According to CPM, and you have this on the back of your paper. Because this is actually, I don't know why they don't show how they get to this. This is the 2747 over um, 123. That just simplified, like made smaller, essentially. Yeah, because that would be times 1,000. Yeah, so that is what our calculator spits out, right? That is 2,747 thousandths. I don't know why, like, I don't think this is any easier to work with. So there are some angles that are really gross slope ratios and some that are close to perfect. With that, we still got 10 minutes left and I would like to give you that. So that is the now. basics of trig. Now, we will start using sine and cosine as we have other bits of information. But right now, all we really care about is, oh yeah, tangent gives us that slope ratio. Now, in a TI-83, let's talk about this real quick. I know a lot of you have that. That, when you hit mode, is a much larger screen, but these default to radians. Now, radians we will talk about as we get deeper in the year. If you want to know what radians are, it's how many times around the circle you've gone. So when an angle opens, it's starting a circle. Right? An entire circle, if we think about circumference, is 2 pi. Right? Circumference is 2 times pi times radius. The angle we open only uses the radius. Right? So again, I'm over teaching, but I want you guys to understand what a radian oh, yeah. is. So, like, so when you yeah. think about an angle opening inside of a circle, it only uses. 
the radius. The radius. Oh. Right, but then it opens to some theta. Right? Radians tell us how much of the distance around have been traveled relating it to the circumference. So it's actually talking about this oh, the distance. distance. So that part. If okay. you go all the way around the circle, that distance is 2 times pi times the radius. So a rotation of 360 degrees we say equals 2 pi radians. Sorry, that's a pi. Which really means 1 pi 1 pi is straight over here. Half of a pi is up here. Three halves of a pi is straight down here because 2 pi is back at where we started. So you don't need to understand this yet. That's what radians mean. It's how much of the circle have you traveled. You've traveled half the circle, you've traveled pi radians. Wow. I should travel half a pi. Wow. You've got